Hello and welcome back to Come Geeksum. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe for future content. Ladies and gentlemen, today's story is a hell of a doozy and it's actually really funny. Jamie Marshy has been playing hide and seek with a process server. So, we have the document as obviously as they are public. We have the solicitation and plaintiff's original petition. I have blurred out sections of this document, mostly because it contains Jimmy Marsh's address, and obviously we can't have that going out there because that is classed as doxing. Even though it is public, I will not be showing that myself. So, the document reads, For delivery to Jamie Marshy. Number one, unsuccessful attempt. May the 1st, 2019 at 7.45pm. I attempted service at the above address. There was no answer at the door. When I went back to the car, I could see someone looking out of the window. I went back, knocked on the door, and also rang the doorbell. I still not get an answer. A vehicle belonging to the defendant was parked in front of the home. I left a card on the door for a callback. Second unsuccessful attempt. May the 4th, 2019 at 5.25 in the evening. I attempted service at the above address. There was no answer at the door. Again, unsuccessful attempt number three, May the 8th, 2019 at 8 a.m. I attempted service at the above address. There was no answer at the door. Now, these next two are the ones where they get kind of funny. The fourth unsuccessful attempt, May the 8th, so two hours later, at 10 a.m. I attempted service at the above address. There was no answer at the door. A white BMW that belonged to the defendant was parked in front of the home. I checked for any of the vehicles registered to the defendant at the same address. It appeared that the BMW that was parked out front is the only vehicle registered to the defendant. The blinds were open downstairs. I sat across the street where the defendant would not be able to see me until about 1.05pm. At that time an Encore utility truck arrived at the defendant's home. The driver got out, went up to the defendant's door. I pulled in front of the home and waited. The defendant did not open the door. The Encore driver left the home as shown in Exhibit A, which we haven't got, but don't worry, which also shows the vehicle registered to the defendant. The Encore driver sat in his truck for about 10 minutes and then left. I stayed another 10 minutes and then I left. The fifth unsuccessful attempt, May the 9th, so the next day at 2.15pm. I attempted service at the above address. There were a couple of five-gallon bottles of water at the door. I pulled across the street and waited for a moment. There was a FedEx truck that pulled up and delivered a carpet by leaving it at the door. I left a card on the carpet roll. And that's really the only gist of it. And then at the bottom, it's just got a few other little things. Mostly just details about the guy and obviously Jamie Marshy. But this is brilliant because in the last couple of months... Jamie Marshy has been going out of her way on Twitter, but I will admit though she has been quiet the last month or so. She hasn't really said anything that could jeopardise her. But when this all first kicked off, she said a couple of tweets about excuse me about that she can't wait for Vic to be in court. She can't wait for all this to happen. She can't wait. If she gets served, she'll like it. She will take the court down and she will make them all believe that Vic is guilty. So, when she's actually uh, been served her papers, well, tried to be served her papers, she's playing hide and seek. She's looking at the window and then not answering the door. It's actually a bit of a shame that these people cannot, like marshals and anything else, they can knock down the door. If they, are, you know, if they got to serve papers or whatever, you know, they should be able to have a marshal or a police officer with them just so they have a search warrant or something like that to enter the premises and just so they can actually leave it there but however obviously this papers have to be given to the person in hand to make sure that they've you know been served papers but this has come at a time when monica and ron they have just gone and their lawyer man oh their lawyer I have no idea what is wrong with their lawyer, but he seems to be part of the Ron and Monica nuthouse. Because he has put out the following. He has actually sent his own to the Honourable Judge of said court. Now comes, 
you know, Monica's uh, her details to quash and everything else. But there's one that they've put out as well, which for me is a doozy. So it's their uh, defendant's original answer to the Honorable Judge said court defendants Monica Riel and Ronald Toy file this original answer to plaintiff's original petition and respectfully show the court as follows. And I'm only going to read out one which is actually really, really funny to me at this moment in time. And <laughs> it actually does show how much fan fiction is out there regarding this lawyer and what he's been told or what he's been looked into. So the one we have here is number nine on the actual documentation. Despite the numerous voice actors and individual victims that have come forward and publicly described their own sexual assault or harassment by Vic Mignogna, Vic brings suit against defendants Monica Rial and Jamie Marshy. For some reason, they have drawn the ear of Mignogna, who has led a public campaign attempting to demonise defendants. Well, first of all, Vic hasn't done any such thing. He hasn't done a public campaign to demonise defendants. He's just gone out of his... He's just gone to conventions and he's done interviews where he's just told his side of the story. So, with them <laughs> saying that, you know, he, you know, he's led a public campaign straight away, they're lying. And he's going on, you know, it says he had obviously, despite the numerous voice actors and individual victims that have come forward and publicly described their own sexual assault... There hasn't been. There's been a few people where the Kick Vic side have actually gone out of their way and used fake photos and fake statements. You've had to have these people who are big fans of Vic who the whose photos have been used against them. And they've had to come out and say, no, that never happened. One girl had to shut down her Twitter and Instagram account because of all the hate she was getting from Kick Vic because she came out and said that's wrong. This is just mind blowing how this lawyer, this Casey guy, has gone on and he has literally just said, Yeah, um, we have hundreds of people who have come out and said they've all been sexually assaulted by Vic, but where's the evidence? Again, there is no evidence evidence i will be going through the actual 10 pages in a little in a video that will be released later on today but just for now i've just <laughs> said that little part of it you know numerous voice actors and individual victims just so we can whet the appetite and whet the beak for later if you are new to the channel please like and subscribe hit that notification bell for future updates and i'll see you soon